Hello everyone and welcome back to another Minecraft tutorial video. Today we are continuing our custom mob uh, portion of the RPG command block series. Last time we talked about how to just set them up in general and we spawned our little custom slimes. Today we're going to be a bit more in depth on the actual loot drops and how to make custom items for your individual mobs. So bear with us in this episode and let's get started. So the next thing that we're going to be working on here is actually giving custom loot to our mobs. So you can see in this command block, I just have the previous command set up. Nothing's really changed here. So this is another parameter that we want to add to the NBT data. So again, we can go uh, right before our attribute section just to keep things in order. I like the attributes being at the end of the command, just so you can quickly go and see if you need to change anything like health and damage. So very briefly, there's a couple different ways to add loot in Minecraft, and this is easily done with MC Stacker, and I can show you at the end of the video. But one of the ways you can do it is create your own custom loot table. This takes a bit of practice, and there are plenty of tutorials out there, and I have had to watch quite a few to be able to do this. It works best if you make your own data pack uh, with your own loot files, um, and then you can call to different loot tables from your mobs. That's really well organized if you're doing a very large-scale project that you want to ship out. Uh, it would be a very smart idea to make your own data pack with a whole bunch of different loot tables. But... The other way to do it, if you just want a mob to drop a very simple item and you don't really care about different loot tables and chances and all that kind of stuff, you can actually set it up with what they're holding. Now, this doesn't always work with all creatures because, uh, like, zombies and skeletons can actually wear armor in all of the slots and hold something in their main hand as well. But what you can do for creatures like slimes and silverfish and other mobs that don't actually wear or hold anything is you can set items into their hand slots or equipment slots anyway and still give them a chance to drop. So to add those into our parameters here, the first thing that we're going to want to do, we'll use the, the hand slot uh, for the slime, but note that you can use the head slot, chest slot, other things as well, which you can see on MC Stacker. So the next attribute is called hand items. We're going to want to put a colon, and then this can be a list of items, so we will do a set of square brackets, and don't forget that we need a comma between all of our parameters there. Okay, so we are going to make our slime actually drop custom coins that we talked about in the uh, custom villager videos. This way, we can have our enemies drop the currency needed at our custom shop, so it's all coming together. So to do this, we'll start editing our first item, so we'll pop a set of curly brackets in there. And the item that we're going to use, of course, is the Minecraft colon gold underscore nugget. Um, the set of quotes, of course, is because this is a string. It's an item that it's looking for. And we're going to want it to be... Oh, but don't forget, uh, before this, you need another set of double quotes and to put ID and a colon. This is saying that we are looking for an ID in Minecraft, uh, and that is a string, which is why we have double quotes there. I did almost forget that. So we're looking for the ID of Minecraft gold nugget, and we're going to have the slime drop, let's say, two of them. So we'll have the count set to 2B, just like that. And just like we did in our custom villager video, here we can actually make the items custom so they're not just a gold nugget. So if you've already seen the video, you can skip ahead, but I'll just very briefly go over how to make this custom item here. We'll start by giving it the tag parameter for the item in a set of curly brackets. And the first tag we're going to want to put on the coins to make them unique is display. Another colon goes after that and another set of curly brackets. And then we want to change the name of the gold nugget. Uh, and this is a set of single quotes because it will be a text list. Another set of curly brackets. And we're going to start by editing the text portion of the name. We'll put a colon after that. And we will call these coins. Well, just singular coin. Um, so that's the end of that. Uh, and then after editing the text function, we can go ahead and add a little comma here a comma here uh, after the single quote because we're done with the text. Uh, we are now going to add the lore portion of the name, uh, which again can be a list. So we'll do some square brackets there. Another set of single quotes because it can be multiple uh, texts long. And we'll put a set of curly brackets to edit the first one. This takes a lot of uh, practice to get used to, but when you edit it on MC Stacker, it's a lot easier. So we're going to change the text of the lore first. Uh, which actually needs a set of double quotes because it is a string. And the text of the lore that will show up on the coin, or the little subtext, basically, is what this is. We will say, I think we called it premium 
currency in the previous video. But uh, you need to name this and make this coin exactly like you did uh, for whatever custom shops, if you're going to use custom shops. Um, if the NBT data is different in any way, then your villagers will not take the custom item. So just go back to your other command blocks where you spawned your villagers, and you can even copy and paste and delete what you don't need for the, uh, for the custom items that they're trading. So we have premium currency set there. Uh, that's that text done with. Um, out of that, we don't need that anymore. We're done with that. We're done with that. Um, but we're not done with editing the gold nugget in general. So the next thing we want to do is add a comma out of those couple of brackets there. And we want to add some enchantments like that, uh, colon. And this can be a list. So we will set uh, a couple of square brackets. Um, but we're not actually going to give it any enchantments. If you just want to give an item just the glint of an enchantment without enchanting it in Minecraft, you can just put an empty enchantment like that, just a couple of curly brackets, and it will shine, but it will not actually be enchanted. Um, okay, so that should be out all the way, I think, right before this square bracket. Yep, because the square bracket is the hand items that we're dropping. Okay, so in essence, the slime will now drop two coins every time you kill it, and those are our custom coin items. Sorry, I blitzed through that a little quickly. If you're curious on how to make uh, custom items more in-depth, you can go ahead and look at the villager trading tutorial that we set up. But we're also going to have it drop another custom item. It's going to drop a very special slime ball that maybe we can give to a quest uh, taker or something like that, or a very special sort of resource shop. So we'll add another comma indicating that there's something else that it can drop uh, from its hand. And we will put another set of curly brackets. And we're looking for the ID of an item, which needs double quotes. And another set of double quotes there. Uh, and this time we are looking for Minecraft underscore slime ball. Now I know what you're thinking. Slimes already drop slime balls. That is true. But we are going to have them drop a unique slime ball that has custom text on it that our villagers can take as a quest item. So just like before, we will put a comma. And we want them only dropping one of these, so we'll put 1B. Uh, and then we will add the custom tags to the slime ball. So bear with me. I'll try and go through it quickly. We want to put a tag, display, name, and then single quotes because it'll be a list of text items. We'll change, oh, not capital. We'll change the text first. And let's call it slimy essence, like that. That's fine, right? Uh, and then we'll add a comma just outside of the text field, um, or the text group, rather. And then we will change the lore of the item, which needs a colon. And not the curly brackets yet. We want a set of square brackets because it can be a list. And a set of the single quotes because it can be a list of text. And we'll edit our first text field here. And we'll classify this as a special drop. So players can see in the subtext that uh, this, along with any other items we want mobs to drop, can be called special drops. Uh, so maybe they know that there's a quest giver that will specifically take special drops from them. And then that should, I believe, close out all of our brackets after that. It is green. Okay. So now, by default, I think there's an 85% chance that the mob will drop your items. But we can actually control that uh, with hand drop chances, which is another parameter. So if we go ahead and add hand drop, oh, careful on the capitals, hand drop chances um, with a colon. And we're going to need a comma after it once we're all said and done. Um, and this is a list of numbers. Okay. So the way we've set up this slime is we had two items in its hand slots. That's because all entities technically have a main hand and an off hand. That's how Minecraft works. If you tried to add more items to its hand slots here, it wouldn't work as well. Uh, that's why you want to make use of the armor slots if you need to. So, the way that the loot chance works is the first number in this little array right here is the main hand, or the first item you've entered, and then the second number you can put in is the offhand, or the second item that you've entered. So, all that means is our gold, our coins that we want to drop, we will set that with a 100% chance, or 1.00. I think MC Stacker adds another zero. I don't think you need to, but... And F, uh, as it is a... I believe a floating number is what the F stands for, because we're using decimal points. And then a comma. So our coins, our first item, should drop with a 100% chance. And let's have our slimy essence drop with a 50% chance, which is a 0 0.500F, like that. Okay. Now, I know that was a lot, uh, and if you skimmed through it, then here we are now. 
Basically, we've added coins and slimy essence in the hand slots of the slime, which is fine because slimes don't have hands. And they will drop with a 100% chance for the coins and a 50% chance for the slimy essence. All right, it should also be noted as I was going back through, there were a couple things uh, that were a little bit flubbed. But that's okay because these commands get very, very long. But just in case you were following along uh, verbatim, then I will show you uh, a couple of things that I noticed should not be where they were. Uh, the first thing here, I did Minecraft underscore slime ball when it should be Minecraft colon slime underscore ball. And then the other issue is uh, ID. Oops. I hate when that happens. The ID uh, tag here does not actually need quotes around it like that um, because it is looking for a specific ID. So we can delete it in both instances there. Um, and I somehow also had a double colon there. Okay. So now uh, that that's fixed, um, I'll have all the commands, the correct commands in pastebin as well uh, in the video description. So if you're more of a person that likes to copy and paste rather than following along, that's totally okay. So if we go ahead and spawn our slime here now and we come over to him and we give him a whack, you can see that sure enough, he actually dropped two gold nuggets. They are shining because they have the uh, enchantment glint and they are called coin with premium currency as their tag. Well, luckily, uh, these smaller ones don't seem to inherit the loot drops. So if you're worried about them getting too many, too much loot, you shouldn't have to worry. Now, we didn't get the slimy essence, and that should be because it's only a 50% drop. So if we come back over here now, you can see this time we actually got the slimy essence, which is called special drop. So just like we planned, the slimes have a 100% chance of dropping two coins and a 50% chance of dropping one slimy essence. Now, as a very quick reminder, as you move on to the next part, the only downside with having mobs drop loot like this is, one, you are limited to, I think it's six different loot items because all mobs have six different slots on them. Two, creatures like skeletons and zombies, uh, if you want them to actually drop armor, they are going to wear the armor if you put them in the correct armor slots. A good way around that, though, is if you have like a helmet in the zombie's boot slot or the boots in the zombie's hat slot, then they'll drop without actually being worn. And three, you can actually modify the individual chances of how many can drop. For example, if we didn't want two coins to drop every time and we wanted, you know, between one and three coins to drop every time, uh, you would need to do that in a loot table. You could start to get a little bit fancy and have like a 30% chance that one coin drops and then another 30% chance that another coin drops and a 30% chance that another coin drops. So in theory, you could just start having loads of different items or the same item over and over again with different chances if you wanted to sort of group it like that together. But if you're doing a rather big project, I just recommend making a loot table uh, in your own data pack, which are videos that you are going to have to find. So that is it. We have finished our slime. This command block doesn't really have anything different, except that he spawned as a tiny one this time. Um, but you can see we have a whole bunch of custom drops uh, from this slime. Their custom health, their custom damage. And that, in a nutshell, is just how you make a custom enemy in Minecraft. Now, there are a couple more things you can do to make them a little bit more unique, but they already have their own damage type, they have their own health type, so you could, in theory, scale enemies like this. If you wanted to spawn them in a certain location at level 1, then at level 2 they'll have a little bit more health, at level 3 they'll they'll have a little bit more health, maybe larger if they're a slime. Um, but that can get a bit tedious, spawning them manually over and over again. Maybe you want players to enter into a room, and as soon as you know they trip a tripwire, uh, your custom enemies will spawn via command blocks. That works. But if you're making a large map and just want these enemies to populate different areas of your map, well, that's where creating custom spawners can come into play. Unfortunately, though, we are running out of time in this video, so in the interest to uh, split up different things, we will continue making spawners and also how to make custom mobs with different attacks in MC Stacker in the next video. So remember, if this video helped you at all, make sure to leave a like uh, and subscribe if you haven't already for more Minecraft tutorials like this. Go ahead and leave a comment down below of any more tutorials you'd like to see. Maybe you'd like to see uh, different mobs interacting. Maybe you'd like to see pathing or teleporting or all sorts of that kind of stuff. I will do my best to cover it. And as another quick reminder, if you haven't already checked out the uh, Command Basics series, I would give it a look. Just refresh your command basics so you know how different parameters and tags work when you're making very long strings like this. I promise you it'll help a lot. So, until next time, guys. See ya!